Okay, all quiet. Fifteen seconds. The obsolete. Hello, good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. Tonight we are in our 21st season of Red Barn Radio and we welcome you to show number 791. Yes. Sam Foster, tonight's guest, is a road dog. He lives and breathes the idea that repetition and regularity are the chisels to refine his craft. He hails from Winston-Salem, um, and he emerged on the North Carolina music scene in 2014. He's brought his brand of tenacity to eager crowds all over the southeastern United States ever since. We're so glad to have Sam back with us, this time with his band, The Obsolete. Let's give it up for Sam Foster and The Obsolete on Red Barn Radio. Well, thank you so much. We start you off with a song called Lucy. She was born in the backseat on some black tar county road. Her daddy was driving just as fast as he could go And on the day her mama pushed her out She was wild, she was free Nothing could ever hold her Not even a boy like me Here we go She was 16, she was breaking hearts for fun Yeah, she loved to wind them up Just to watch them come undone When she finally got to me We was pushing legal aid Yeah, we thought we ran this town Full of passion for rage Some people come and go, thought I never wanted more. And she'd spin old vinyl, buddy Holly to the stones. Exiled on Main Street, but yet we still rain on. Oh, Lucy, tell me what have you done? Oh, Lucy. Yeah. 
Thank you for the clap. Good evening and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. While drawing much inspiration from legends of country music past and present, Sam Foster's roots run deep into the vein of American music, and he is continually inspired by folk, soul, rock, and rhythm and blues. In late 2021, after splitting with his band Whiskey Foxtrot, Foster formed a backing band and now tours as both a solo act as well as Sam Foster and the Obsolete. Foster is proud to announce the release of Heat Waves, his first record with the Obsolete, out in June of 22, the record retains Foster's roots in country and Americana, but forges ahead into exciting new territory. Sam is here tonight on Red Barn Radio with his band, The Obsolete. They are Brad Cardell on bass and vocals, Nikki Forrester on keys and vocals, Mitch Hall on drums, and hey, who else? Sam Foster on vocals and guitar. Welcome Sam Foster and The Obsolete to Red Barn Radio. Thank you, thank you. This is a song off the Heat Waves record. I, uh, I was right and just doing the stream of consciousness uh, lyrical content and it came out somewhere between Tom Petty and Elvis Costello and I'll take that it's called Smooth Silk Suit So you want to start making plans Maybe I started making plans Allow me to say no that's just business And it don't really matter to me It don't matter to me I reckon one day we'll see And we'll see Ain't that what they all say Oh, oh now, now ain't it fair Your soup, it's a little tired Take it to your man, so post haste. And when he's all used up, it tastes like dust. Be careful when you pull your bell. Hold eyes up front, they'll start to melt. Running low, oh, on sustain. Might as well be cocaine. And it's all. Well, 
out. Thank you. This is another song off Heat Waves. It, uh, it's about learning to drive stick shift in the, the back seat of a 1996 Honda Accord. I got a world of it and it just won't quit Sometimes fun is having a smoke But it makes me choke like a dirty joke Making out in the back of my car Left the bar, to be way too far Feel the sweat on the back of my neck Honey, what comes next? Looking like a wreck Thank you, that song's over. <laughs> it's rather abrupt. That's Nikki's favorite song to play. Sure it is. He said he feels like one of those animatronic mouses at the Chuck E. Cheese, sitting here hitting notes like that. <laughs> so we affectionately call him Charles E. Cheese. Charles E. Cheese. That's right. <laughs> Charles H. Cheese? Both. <laughs> this is a single off the Heat Waves record. It's, uh, it's called Custom Deluxe. Custom Deluxe in the front row seat to the passenger side, holding your knees. What you got to keep me away, circle.
Thank you. This next one is uh, based on a true story that happened in the town I grew up in. It's a story my dad told me he uh, remembered everything happening when he was in high school. And uh, to make a long story short, the names have been changed to protect the guilty and the innocent and the people that are still living and are not. This is going to be Murder Ballad 1 of 2 for the evening. This is called Memorial Day. I was 16 the night it all came down Just a truck driver's son in a rural town I was bound to be a junior when school came in the fall I remember the morning, the day we got the call Well, I sort of knew him from his sister down the street. He'd stop by on a weekend, all from the factory. And he couldn't spell his name, no, he couldn't read or write. He never seemed too sharp, but he was level with the sight. Do you believe it's written that 
in the air state troopers parked up the way last night the deputy was killed is what the newspaper wrote culprit was found in a barn still alive with a rope around his throat they declared him an outlaw the last one in the state all look down on him and they spit his name for hate but even at 16 hell i could see the cards in his hand he might have been bad probably had enough no doubt a broken man well i believe Sins bury him. 
Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, glad to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. Welcome to yet another sound of Sam Foster, which is his new uh, his new sound with the obsolete his his band that has just uh, released a, a brand new CD. Um, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Man, back. music sounds great. Thank you. I'm loving it. Um, so, Sam, I wonder if, uh, before we talk about heat waves and sort of where your music has come, where it's headed, I wonder if you might just uh, start us off by taking a, a couple of minutes to tell listeners, you know, who you are, where you're from, um, you know, how long you've been writing and playing music, how it came to you, yeah. why you still do it, all that stuff. Well, I guess I still do it because I'm an idiot. I'm not, that I'm not too good at anything else. <laughs> All right, start start yeah. at the end. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, that's it. No, I'm uh, a, from a little community called Farmington, North Carolina, but nobody knows where that is, so I tell everybody Winston Salem. Okay. Uh, it's the closest, I guess, uh, larger city. So how close are you actually to uh, the metropolitan area? Twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. So I guess technically the suburbs or something. Sure. It's pretty rural yeah. out there. Um, but I got interested in music from an early age. I, my parents were always big music fans, and the music my dad listened to in particular, he was always, you know, listening to Dwight Yoakam, Emmylou Harris, Doc Watson, Flatt and Scruggs. And so those seeds were planted early on. And I remember seeing a music video of Dwight Yoakam when I was like five. It was, it was the These Arms video, and he's slinging the Gibson uh, guitar around. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And it was all downhill from there. <laughs> ah, so Dwight Yoakam, Dwight Yoakam, your your earliest yep. influence. Yeah. Do you like that guitar? Yep. I'd love to have one, but I'm t I'm too broke to afford a nice yeah. Gibson. Ha! Ah, what about that electric guitar player played with him? Pete uh, Anderson. Oh, Pete Anderson, huh? Yeah. He's one of those like as soon as he hits a note, you you know it's him just based on his tone. Yeah. He's such a yeah a great picker. Yeah. So okay. So um. So that's kind of a I guess kind of a far cry from where you are here. Um, your, your music now sounds sort of like um, North Carolina meets New Jersey meets <laughs> Indiana. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, it's, it's real sort of true Americana. Yeah. As, I mean, as you, know, as you get older, tastes develop. I always loved Dwight Yoakam, and then when I was a teenager, I had a heavy metal phase, hardcore screamo kind of stuff. You know, oh, you did? Eye gouging music. Yeah, I had long hair and a skateboard that I couldn't even skate on. Ah. <laughs> and uh, but then when I was 16, I discovered Bruce Springsteen because again my dad was a fan, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and give Bruce a shot. And I bought the greatest hits, and the first three tracks on the greatest hits was like Thunder Road, Born to Run, and Badlands, uh, uh. and I was sold. Ha. Uh. Yeah. So did that music have an impact on you that you felt sort of went deeper than um, than Yoakum? Because you know Springsteen's lyrics go to a different place. Yeah, it made, it made me want to write songs. Like Dwight, you know, it's cool to have a guitar and play, and he's the king of cool, right? But hearing Bruce, it was like, I want to write something that sounds like that. Not that I'll ever get anywhere close, but that, that chase of writing something like Jungle Land. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when you were, when you were uh, 14, so let's say uh, ninth grade, right? Or yeah. eighth, ninth grade. Um, were you at that point already deep into your instrument and starting to write songs? Yeah, I'd started playing guitar when I was about 12. Okay. Um, taking lessons. <clears throat> and I learned a little bit, learned some chords, and uh, learned, you know, a few lead licks. But again, I was wanting to write songs because I wanted to put together a garage band. It's like, well, if we're going to be legitimate, we, we got to write our own songs. Uh -huh. And so my guitar teacher and I would write songs, and we spent a year doing that before my parents squash that they're like we're not gonna pay you know once a week for you to write songs you just do that you know oh but that sounds like a, that sounds like a great thing to do with a teacher it was i mean and it it did teach me a lot that year we spent doing it about rhyming schemes and how to make things flow together and just you know the songs were utter nonsense because we're going to talk about when you're 14 years old but uh -huh. um, it was a starting point for sure so what else was going on with you as a, as a young teenager? Like, what, what about school and girls yeah. and sports and all those things? Yeah, I was, uh, I was homeschooled up through seventh grade, and then my parents kicked me out. Uh -huh. I was a bit of a hellion, uh -huh. if you can believe that, Brad. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of times the reason parents homeschool is because their kids are hellions, and they want to... 
they want to sort of protect them at home. Yeah. I was homeschooled second through seventh grade, and then they sent me to a private Christian school. Okay. Yeah. So I'm one of those kids. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> it means whatever you want it to mean. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, your parents, that was a, a value that uh, was, you know, big in, in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. And so w what about... Um, what about you? Did you hold on to that uh, through into your adulthood? In a way, um, as I like to say, me and the big man have an understanding. But I, when I was 16, you know, 15, 16, I was very much a product of that hard right wing conservative Christian environment. Mm. And but as I got older and I got into the world and you know met people that didn't grow up in North Carolina that were from you know another side of the world, it I learned pretty quickly that. Uh, there's one, more than one way of thinking, and other than the way I was taught up, and who's just, and it, it just made me start questioning things that I, that I had been taught growing up, that which, makes, which is healthy. Yeah, yeah, it's healthy, but it's also uh, it's also challenging and and pretty traumatic for um, for kids who grow up in the kind of environment where you grew up. Did you did you find that? Um, did you find that you sort of ran into uh, some some obstacles along the way? Was it um, was it difficult for you to make that break? Not not entirely, um, because even even still growing up in that environment, my dad had always, you know, just tried to tell me from the time I could start thinking for myself when I became a teenager, because he had had someone that mentored him that told him the same thing was there's the same thing. There's more than one way to to think and. To view the world and not everybody believes the same thing that you do so it, it just taught me to have an open mind as I got older instead of just being you know a stubborn punk it it allowed me to have that flexibility to consider some other viewpoint other than my own whether I agree with it or not yeah sure yeah. did you do uh, after high school did you do college or think about college I did I went to a couple years of community college what'd you do there um, I studied career or aviation management technology I was on track to be a commercial pilot, which still may happen if this thing don't work out. <laughs> well, you've been at this for quite a long time. Wow. I mean, it yeah. seems like. Do you do anything other than um, other than music? Now? I do. Yes, I still have a day job. I'm fortunate enough. Uh, I think we even probably talked about it the last time. Was I, I work with a, a group of good people, and they're you know I work from home, and they let me come and do this, and and are flexible with me on schedule, and and, and can be supportive. So I'm I'm very thankful for that yeah that kind of rings a bell what what kind of work it's a it's an air charter company <clears throat> so uh you know you can call up and say hey i'm gonna go from lexington kentucky to nashville and we'll send you a quote if you want to fly down there and yeah and so i mean do you find deals for people i mean like for instance if listeners right now are interested in getting a a good flight the yeah. uh, cheapest flight to uh it's not know. that we like the company owns their own aircraft so okay, gotcha. it's it's pr it's like private flying it's more expensive, but it's worth it. You don't have to go through the airport and go through security, and it's just you uh -huh. on the plane. Yeah. So uh, why don't you take us through um, in, into Whiskey Foxtrot mm -hmm. and um, sort of how that came to be, and then um, maybe the story of, of how you transitioned out of that into or, or you know began something new. Yeah. I, uh, you know, like we said, started playing in 2014. And a couple years into that, I was, you know, meeting people, playing songwriter nights and open mic nights. And uh, a friend of mine, Callie Smith, set up a songwriter night with uh, this guy, Seth Williams. And at the time, I thought he was, like, my age. Uh, so I would have been 22 at the time. And he was this, like, 16-year-old kid, come to find out. But we hit it off, uh, his family and I. And, you know, we'd show up at each other's gigs and be like, you know, he's playing a pizza joint one night, and so I'd go show up and be like, yeah, come play a few songs, and then he'd show up at one of mine. And we were playing together so much, and I was talking with him and his family. It's like, and we really, you know, Seth wanted to put a band together, as did I. I was like, well, you're a good songwriter. I'm a good songwriter. Like, why don't we just join forces and, and start a band? So we did that, and our first official show as Whiskey Foxtrot was in 2017, even though we'd been playing a year before that. And was it down by where you live? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're pretty mostly playing across North Carolina um, nice. to start with. We're doing acoustic duo stuff, and but with the idea of hey, we want to put a band together. And Seth uh, had already been making music with Terry Von Cannon and Stephen Worley. They had played on some of his solo records. So I'm like, well, we need a bass player. 
And then th that's Enter where we Brad. that's where we found Brad. Nice. We put an ad Good out. On, we put an ad out on Craigslist. Really? Yeah. We got. We went through a few weirdos. No doubt. Yeah. We ended with yeah. That's, that's <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we met Brad in 2018, and we just we hit it off with him, and uh, hit the road and didn't look back pretty much. And he didn't try to sell you Mary Kay cosmetics or Amway or anything like that. N not that I recall. <laughs> No, so, nothing nefarious. So your your uh, partner, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten the, your partner's name. The, yeah, the Seth fellow, Williams. Yeah, so Seth, you came, so you you were coming from uh, Dwight Yoakam, mm -hmm. and where was Seth coming from? And he came, he grew up uh, around bluegrass. His uh, maternal grandfather played bluegrass, but he was also involved in the blues scene down there through Terry Von Cannon, who was mentoring Seth, and so they did, you know, blues competitions. They'd go to Memphis and compete, and, and he won, you know, a few, a few different years, if I'm not mistaken. And the instrumentation for Whiskey Foxtrot for folks who yep. haven't listened to that music? Seth and I both sang and played guitar, and we had Brad on bass, a drummer, Stephen Worley, and uh, Terry Von Cannon on lap steel. So it was a blend of southern rock and country, alt country kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk some more in a little bit about uh, about heat waves and right. about uh, the rest of these guys. We know Brad. Um, hey, I've got Sam Foster on Red Barn Radio this evening. We're glad you're with us. We got a lot more conversation and a lot more music. Um, let's welcome them back, Sam Foster and the Obsolete. Thank you so much. I'm gonna take this next quick second to tune because I care. I don't want to sound like a total punk. Uh, Come on. Yeah, there it is, Mitch. We were just sitting here talking about the clash before we got uh, rolling this evening. What would Joe Strummer do? What did our audience last week say, Sam? He said, uh, we tune because you care. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> this is another one off Heat Waves. I quit drinking uh, three years ago this December, and writing during the pandemic I started to reflect on all the dumb things I had done and uh, I treated people poorly and uh, like I was in a relationship that was with someone who was really good to me and and I bungled it so I started feeling bad about that and wrote this one this is called Set Alarm Rubber up on the boulevard, passing the speed in a stranger's car. Don't tell, don't tell, lines of sin, hot nights in the city, boy, where have you been? She feels 
Thank you. Those, those chimes are my favorite part of this whole evening. While Brad switches bases, introduce this next one. This is the lead track off the album, um, off Heat Waves. And I, when I originally wrote it, it was supposed to be a Whiskey Foxtrot song, uh, which is half, how half this record started. But I had a totally different version worked up. It sounded like Neil Young and Crazy Horse. And then as we started making the, you know, continuing this record, I came up with this chord progression that sounded Tom Petty as hell. So it happened this way, it's called Let Me Out. But I never quite knew just what it means. I took the time to learn, and now I'm mad as hell for wasting time and burn gasoline. Thank you, Ken. Brad, you switch more than a guitar player, I tell you. That's all right. I'll allow it. 
This is Brad Cardell on the bass, everybody. One of my best friends in the whole world. We've been playing music together for a while now. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, almost five years. We started uh, working up this next song as a Whiskey Foxtrot tune, and we were playing a lot of wiffle ball at the time when we should have been rehearsing and writing. So that, that kind of spawned this, but as we kept working on it, we were trying to figure out harmonies. And Brad's like, what would the kinks do, you know? And so we started screwing around with the, the chorus harmonies. And the more we did it, the more we liked it. So we decided to keep it. Yeah. Now I know the chorus. There you you never knew. That's a good keeper. Yeah. So, and we love, you know, the kinks, Eric Burden and the animals. Oh, yeah. All that, you know, good 60s rock and roll. So this one is called uh, Big Yellow Bat. Hey, folks, we've got uh, lots more music and conversation with Sam Foster in The Obsolete, but I'd like to take just a minute to remind uh, those of you who need reminding that Red Barn live streams both tonight's and on any Wednesday remain available online for you to view at your convenience on the Red Barn YouTube channel. And our live stream video, our live video stream is also available on the WEKU 
WGAD.org website, as is our audio stream, compliments of WGAD.net in central New York. Don't miss a single episode of our program, and for heaven's sakes, be sure to tell your friends what it is that you like about Red Barn Radio and why it is that they should be listening. Okay, next week, we're going to bring back the heavy hitters funk band. I got to tell you, th these guys can knock down the sound. They, they showed up here just over a year ago, um, short a guitar player, and yeah, we wondered you know, what happens when the funk is missing the spunk. Well, we were uh, thoroughly surprised with what they pulled off as a trio. It was amazing. Their vocals, their bass deep in the groove, and a polished sound that only comes from a group who knows that they are much more than the sum of their parts. What a great sound. The heavy hitters are back, folks, and this time with the whole band, so you're going to be dancing. Jay Jackson of the heavy hitters says, if you can't keep your feet still, well, you can blame it on the groove because you can't help what happens to you when you get hit with that funk. That's Jay Jackson. That's the heavy hitters. You got to be with us next week on Red Barn Radio. Now let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program with Sam Foster. We welcome you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the grand city of Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome back, Sam Foster and the Obsolete. Thank you. Tell you what, it's real good to be back. It's been a minute. Glad to finally have the, the Heat Waves record out in the world now that I'm back. This was the lead single off the album. It came out back in April. The single came out in April. And uh, it's about loving your neighbor, having empathy for them, even though you may not understand what they're going through or relate to it. Um, but you can still love them and not be a dick. This is called Loud and Clear. Are you crying? You're just wet from the rain. Are you lying? You're just feeling the shame. You're afraid of an up on a bad side of a book. But you give back all the dignity you took. Tell me now. Turn your head to the side and force out a call. You can dress back up, they don't see nothing wrong. They say it gets better in a week or two, but this time it's different. You feel what's right to do. Cause it's coming in. Loud and clear Yeah, it's coming in Loud and clear Now the town's lit up Like a pinball machine you can see the flames, but you know what they mean. Burning up the years of hate and sin. We can't look away and we can't go back again. Cause it's coming in loud and clear. Yeah, it's coming in. Loud and clear
Would you catch yourself when you're starting to glide? And would you stand up for your brother's pride? Or would you cower like a dog that's been kicked around? Would you hate a hidden man that wears a tarnished crown? Cause it's coming in loud and clear. Yeah, it's coming in loud and clear. Thank you. That's about as mellow as it's going to get for the rest of the evening. The rest of it's going to be a rock show. This is the title track. As Mitch has so pointed out, we have a hidden vowel in the title. It's called Heat of Waves. <laughs> My country accent, i tell you one thing. Gravel Mouth, man. Gravel Mouth. That's a good, that'd be a good band name. <laughs> it's called Heat Waves. like a heat wave Maxed out and you push it back in Just like I told you it's original sin Are you guilty of digging a grave Growing up to try to teach you all the facts Frame and glory are the ones who turn the back for God and country so they say He raised in the Bible there To change the channel But you know what you feel He's a work If you ever destroy Don't want to be Just another good southern boy Flags of treason Shut it down before somebody gets hurt Another mother crying over our hurts Is it too late? We're glad you're here They flip the script and rig the whole design Even still they only read you half the lies Now it's up to you Don't want to be just another good southern boy
it way the heck out of tune. I got a little ham-fisted. This next one's another one off Heat Waves. We're doing pretty much the whole Heat Waves record tonight. And uh, a few oldie, golden oldies thrown in there. This next one is uh, it's about social anxiety, which I don't know if y'all can pick up on this, but I have a bit of. I hate, like, going in public. I always feel anxious and... Uh, afraid to talk to people. Once I get to know someone, I'll warm up, but I don't know. It's a weird thing. What are you saying about this? This is called Drama Queen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Wow, wow. Well, there's a lot of uh, 
A lot of newness in the air here. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great. And we've got uh, new uh, fall season, beautiful color out there. Uh, so they got a new deodorizer in the men's room. I noticed which that. Which I think is great. I noticed that. Lovely yeah. smell. Did any others of you notice that? It's pleasant. I think it's lovely. And, but loveliest of all is uh, you guys, and, and your sound tonight is beautiful and full. It's like a train. Thank you. I love it. Just rock and roll, man. Just loving it. Just loving it. Um, you know, let's, let's uh, come back to, uh, to Brad uh, Cardle and you, Sam, in a minute. But I think we ought to introduce, uh, introduce the other players here. Um, I, wonder, uh, I wonder, Mitch, if um, you, you might loosen the, uh, uh, loosen the arm on that, uh, that boom mic there and, and drop it down. We don't want to. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ed has said, uh, come on out. Come on. Are you okay with that? Mitch come on Hall. down. Come on down. Let's bring him out here. That's Mitch Hall on drums. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Hey, Mitch, uh, tell, us, tell us about you. What a great sound you add to this ensemble. Oh, well, thank you. Um, Yes, I've just been playing forever. Yeah, <laughs> tell, tell us. Yeah, tell me about your uh, about your training. When did you uh, When did you start? And are you from that area down there? Uh, yeah, North Carolina. I was okay. born in Mount Airy, known yeah. as Mayberry. Uh huh. So, oh yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah, um, I started you know beating around on things when I was about three or four. Uh huh. Um, when I turned five, I got a, a drum set, a keyboard, a microphone. Oh wow. And a guitar. And uh, uh, a little backup story. My dad he owned a, re a record store and a radio station. So I was constantly, I had music for days. I mean, they would bring me the top 100. So I constantly had just, you know, so I just started playing along to everything. And uh, wow, Mitch. early on, Elvis was my big guy. Uh -huh. You know, I'm 54, so it goes on back. Okay. Um, so Elvis was my thing, the monkeys. Um, Indeed. And then when I was five, I started, uh, my dad, he got me into impersonating Elvis because I liked Elvis, so he, my grandmother made me a suit, or a few suits, actually, and uh, I started touring the three states, like North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, At what uh, age opening up beauty pageants. Oh, come on. Because my dad was a DJ, so he would MC, you know, pageants, so he, he brought me into that, and then when I was uh, seven, we went to see Elvis in Greensboro, and uh, he got Man. me up there, and uh, then the next year, he gets me up there again, so I was on stage with Elvis twice, um, in 75 and 76. Mitch. 76 was a longer time. I, I got to get up there and shake my leg, and Elvis falls on his back laughing. So, you know, it's a crazy childhood story. Uh, so that when, is a crazy story. Can you shake yeah. Now? What's that? Can you shake the leg now? I, I mean, not it, really. It, uh, <laughs> it went away. I retired from that when I was nine. Um, so, because, <laughs> you know, then uh, I had gotten into Kiss and uh, Van Halen and these other bands, and so I kind of. <laughs> ventured away from Elvis. Not that I don't like him, but you know, I, sure. I started getting more into uh, you grew that out kind of stuff. It. Yeah, and then by the time I was eleven, I was <laughs> playing in a band, and uh, have been ever since. Uh, as far as training goes, I mean, yeah. I'm basically self-taught. Studied a whole lot. I teach drums all week. Um, I went to Drummers Collective in New York, in Manhattan. So I went there for a month and just done some private studies with some teachers. Yeah, tell now, me about. Tell, tell us more about Drummers Collective. Uh, well, it's in Manhattan, and it's a bunch of good drummers up there. And <laughs> yeah. So uh, I attended that in 94 for, like, say, a month, just taking – I picked four guys just to do some lessons with for a month, and um, it, was, it, was, it was a game changer. I mean, you know, I, from Mayberry, and you go up to New York when you're 23, 24, whatever it was, that was a whole different – I'd never been there. So, uh, and the school was just around the corner from the Trade Center, so it was right down in the, in the heart of Manhattan there. Huh. Um, but that, yeah, what an experience, you know. Uh, I studied with a Latin guy, a chart guy, a really mean kind of reading guy who was like the evil English teacher. And uh, Perfect. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of me. And then I met these guys. Uh, I had to sub for you. That's right. Yeah. That's the first gig that Whiskey Foxtrot played with a full band with a Brad, Mitch was actually the drummer because our original drummer, Stephen Worley, couldn't make it that night. So Mitch filled in with us. Yep, so yeah. that's how I got to know them. I, I, I do a lot of sub gigs and stuff. Yeah, um, hold that up a little higher if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I do a lot of subbing for different bands. And uh, so, yeah, well, I play with him. I play with Seth. Uh, I'll be playing with Seth Saturday night, actually. So uh, 
Um, and then on other things, I, um, in like a crazy prog rock instrumental thing with the bass player from Mudvayne. Um, it's called Soften the Glare. And so I do that. This. And that gives you a chance to use some other kinds of chops. Yeah, yeah, I use a way bigger kit with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's a lot of other stuff. Uh, but uh, Well, I love hearing I you I talk about the different, the different teachers that you got at the collective. I mean, it's, it sounds like a lot of wisdom that had you choosing, you know, four, you know, diverse teachers. Yeah, I mean, coming from a rock background, I kind of avoided that. I was like, well, I won't take from the rock guys. I Smart. want a Latin guy. I want a chart reader. I want yeah. a, a reading guy. And then the other guy was kind of just an overall guy. He, he just a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was a crazy experience being up there for a month. I know, bet. Riding the subways and the metros and you know, it's like I tell people, it don't take but like a minute to get into New York and you just see all this stuff you saw in your life growing up. Uh -huh. I mean, from the bums to the just whatever. It's like, wow, this is really happening here all the time, you know? Yeah. But, uh, well, you yeah. sure do. You bring a ton to the sound here. And uh, we, oh, well, thank I'm you. glad to meet you and thanks for your plan. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. all right. I enjoy it. All right. <laughs> That's Mitchell on drums. And, uh, and now we've got, uh, now we're going to hand the mic over to, uh, Nikki Forrester, and he's on keys uh, here. And you know your your sound, um, your 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 keys bring your 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 keyboards bring a lot of air, bring a lot of breathing into the oh, music, man. and you know the organ sounds just kind of make it soar. It's <laughs> well, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, what a great sound. Talk talk to us about uh, your background and training. Um, so my dad has a minor in piano, so it was. I'm one of four, so he was like, I'm, I'm not going to make them play music, but I'm going to make them take a year of piano each. Uh -huh. And I think I was the only one that stuck with it. So did piano for a few years and found heavy metal music, and I was like, well, piano's stupid. So I didn't play <laughs> piano for really seriously for until about a year before Sam got in touch with me, but uh, just played it on and off, you know, playing guitar and bass and drums and other things. Uh -huh. But uh, then about... <laughs> year or two before the pandemic, I was like, let me get back into piano a little bit. And then right as I had started to get okay at it again, Sam was like, I need you to be a lot better than okay. So, yeah. So that's kind of when that started. You don't give yourself enough credit. None, <laughs> none of y'all do, but. But yes, yeah, so I've been, I mean, I've been playing since I was eight, but huh. I, jazz trained, I guess, but never went to school for it or anything. Just private lessons mostly. Well, this kind of gets to, you know, what you, what you just said a minute about Sam sort of pushing you to, to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, it sort of gets to where I was going to go with, uh, you know, with, with Brad here is, is, you know, is that, um, is, is that something that um, makes playing with Sam more attractive that you feel like he, he challenges you to go sort of out of your comfort zone? This is one of the most polished groups I've ever played in. Like uh -huh. this we don't really like anything less than perfection, which like I like, but playing in garage rock and metal bands and stuff, that's not a standard that you usually get to see. So it's a, it's a real treat getting to play with guys this good, you know, like, like guys, Mitch, Brad and Sam are some of the best musicians I've ever played with. So it's, it's a real treat getting to be in this project and playing like mm -hmm. arrangements. Yeah. Instead of just let's jam for an hour. Like we uh -huh. have like, everything we do is very thoroughly thought out and yeah, you know, very meticulous and, it's a nice change of pace, you know. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. we can tell it's it's thought out and um, detailed. It's great. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. Um, Brad Cardell, hi. Good, hey, good Brad. to have you back again, uh, good Bradley. To see, good to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so tell us, um, tell us, what what is it that's um, sort of kept you with Sam? You guys obviously have a long uh, friendship, and he owed me money, so I went oh, ahead and uh, there we go. You know, there, yeah, that wasn't. No. <laughs> No, um, when the, when Whiskey Foxtrot um, split up, um, I was thinking I probably had some downtime going on, but it really split two songwriters apart, and there was only one foundational bass player that knew all of it, so I got a little, like twice as busy. Huh. Um, but I, I've always enjoyed both both Seth and Sam's uh, writing, and 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 we spent a lot of time together. Um, putting those songs with Whiskey Foxtrot together and, and you know, you, you build those relationships. So it wasn't something I wanted to uh, part with. And, and Sam, Sam and I were pretty tight on some songs already um, that were coming out before the, the split, right? So but I wanted to kind of see that through. I wanted to see that to fruition and see, see that happen on, on his album after the Whiskey Foxtrot split up. So I, I felt like we have more work to do. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't want to walk away from that. So that's, that's why I'm still here. Well, it's good that you are. <laughs> Great sound. I think. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, hey, Sam, let, I, I'd like to get to, uh, to heat waves and have you talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also want to hear you talk a little bit more. Um, earlier on, you were uh, talking about how important it was for you to have sort of turned over a new leaf when it came to drinking. We all know that sort of alcohol is sort of an occupational hazard for people who are in the entertainment field. Um, you reflected a little bit on the impact that that had on relationships for you. How about, um, how did things change for you in terms of the way that you work, write, um, your, your routines as an artist when you were able to uh, put alcohol behind you? Well, in short, it, it just made everything better. I mean, just across the board, physically, mentally, emotionally feeling better. And uh, it's that same old cliche everyone says, when you get sober, you know, your mind gets clear and you're writing better than ever. And I was like, ah, when I was drinking, I was like, I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm pretty good now, you know. And, uh, hmm. and, but not that I think I'm great now, but once I spent some time, you know, without it in my system, I noticed my energy coming back just on a day to day level, coming out and playing a show. You know, we'd go and play a two or three hour gig with Whiskey Foxtrot and I'd be winded in the first 30 minutes. Hmm. Um, but after, you know, stopping drinking, lose weight, try and exercise and eat better or less. Uh, it just, multiple things come with it, it makes your mind clear. And when the pandemic happened, I was uh, terrified that I was never gonna write another song again because Whiskey Fox mm. tried to just put a record out. And I was like, I'm never gonna write again. I don't know if I can do this. And then all of a sudden, uh, the first version of Let Me Out came. And then after that, it was just like every week, and one or two coming out. And Seth, and Seth and I would be talking, like we, we played a gig one night Brad and Seth and I, and like on the way home is when Let Me Out started happening. And Seth was like, I just saw you like 20 minutes ago. You're already just writing new stuff. It's like, yeah. Mm. And it got the, our juices flowing, and uh, which ended up leading into heat waves. But I, it allowed me to open up my mind and not just focus on whatever I was bummed about or upset about or whatever yeah. broken heart I had, just to try and, uh, it's part of that growing, just you know, having an open mind like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Well, I suppose you know any any release, new release for an artist is is um, is important. It's a culmination of a lot of work and and time and mm -hmm. thought. Um, but this this release, Heat Waves, seems like um, larger than that. You think so? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, and just in, you know, as I hear as I hear you talk and and where the songs are coming from, they're coming from a um, maybe a more joyous place, a, a healthier place. That seems powerful, and it's it's to me apropos that you've brought new sound to your music yeah. that re that reflects that. Well, thank you. There, there's still sad boy songs at the end of the day, sad sad bastard tunes, if we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> they just uh, it's a it's a rock and roll record, and I always wanted to do that too because I love Bruce and Tom Petty and yeah. Elvis Costello, so I really wanted to get a little gritty with it, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought the, the grit here. It's so good to see you again. Yeah. What a fun evening of music this has been. I'm glad it's not over. Yep. So we got a few more. Yeah. Well, let's get back to some more music yeah. uh, with Sam and The Obsolete on Red Barn Radio. Thank you. All. I cannot state enough how, uh, how fortunate I am to be playing with these guys. They, like I said, I said it jokingly a minute ago, but they, they don't give themselves enough credit. Um, I wouldn't be the player I am now if I hadn't spent five years pr playing with Brad, if I hadn't spent two years playing with Terry Von Cannon and Stephen Worley. Just surrounding yourself with people to push you to be better in every aspect is the most important thing. And Brad will yell at me if I don't tune. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This, uh... This is an oldie goldie. This is the closest thing I've ever had to a hit. Um, Co wrote it with my buddy James Vincent Carroll, which he doesn't claim to remember. <laughs> but I, I wrote the majority of it in uh, sitting at an airport bar in Miami. And I've told the story a million times. Um, but it's got like 60 and a half plays on Spotify. So, like, maybe after tonight, it'll be 60 and 7 eighths. Yeah. I put this on a record a few years ago called, uh, records called Hardened Hearts. There's a song off it called Miami Springs. 
She said, I know it's hard, but I don't feel the same As I did before, and I can't change You were the very best, but I can't stay With a man I can't love every day And I flew all night just to get here Warm, salty air make my mind clear And she's so far gone And I'll never be back home Lord, it's so hard to move another one off the heat waves record it uh wrote it i was a little bit agitated with uh what it turned out to be myself or by people getting so wrapped up in a certain aesthetic of whatever kind of art they're making and it drove me nuts and then the more i played the song and spent time with the lyrics i was like oh yeah this is this is most definitely self-referential so without further ado this is called false poet prophet
jacket And you're coming on the scene You got a blue denim jacket And you're busting on the scene Snake skin boot. You got a red bandana and a pair of snake skin boots. Yes, you perfected the name drop in all your bleeding heart life. We stand here all day, but we both know it's true. They wouldn't give a damn about me and then you when you keep the lines blurred. And you get hurt, and when the heat comes down, and you're stuck inside this town, just a false poet prophet with a mess of wasted words. Mess of wasted words. Mess of wasted words. Thank you. We kind of like those abrupt endings, don't we, Nikki? It's the best. Yeah, that's right. It's the best. Thanks so much again to uh, the crew at Red Barn for having us and letting, come, letting us come make some loud sounds and, and here. And thank you all for tuning in online. And those of you that came out tonight, really do appreciate it. It's the largest crowd we've played to in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Well, we're going to do this next one. It's, off, uh, it's a lead track off the Hardened Hearts album. And Brad has been begging me for five years to play it. Um, and I never felt like it was my strongest lyrical content. But, you know, seeing... Yeah, yeah, he says it's a live song. It is so, live, yeah. Listen to a lot of the band when I wrote it, so you can do the math on that. So this is called Take Your Toys. Baby, don't you know? 
so many people to thank for our program. First, Sam Foster and the Obsolete, our guests on tonight's program. We are ever grateful for our volunteers and staff, of course, who make our production happen so beautifully each week. And we want to thank all of you, all of you for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn's premier radio partner, Central and Eastern Kentucky's radio news leader. You can listen online at weku.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. That's NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Those of you here in the Central Kentucky area, you gotta be sure to check out Red Barn TV. It's our weekly program of music, now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now let's bring back Sam Foster and the Obsolete for one more tune. Thank you all again so much. Like what you're hearing, find us on the interweb, Sam Foster NC. We're going to leave you with uh, our final mur murder ballad for the evening. It's a sister song to the one we did earlier. It's called Somebody's Gonna Get It Tonight.
lately my hand has been acting kind of strange. Still it's gotten into you that's making you this way. Her eyes held the pressure, the truth and the fear. That's when I knew someone else been sleeping here. And she wouldn't answer, she wouldn't tell. She knew if I found out it sent me to hell, yes sir. Two keys stashed back in the trunk. The deputy drug me out and he held me on the ground. They put me in cuffs and we went downtown. And they never called the dogs and they never searched the car. A DUI was my only charge. When I posted bail, deputy told me with a grin, expect to be here in front of me again. Trolling coming up the street from 65 forward into the drive. That's when my hand flipped on the lights. She was acting kind of nervous, nervous one thing. And I never thought about it too much again. So I'm rolling now, my hands clenched tight. Somebody's gonna get it tonight. When they strap me to the gurney, I can rest my head and they'll roll me out. My head's clenched tight. Somebody's gonna get it
Thank you so much. All right, Sam Foster and the obsolete. Before we wrap up tonight, uh, the Red Barn team here would like to express its condolences to the family, friends, fans, and bandmates of Marty Charters, Marty of Jocelyn and the Sweet Compression. Uh, this week we lost Marty, and we are thinking of him and um, would like to just take a few moments of silence to do that. And that's all for our show for this week. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. And you can also listen to archived performances on Spotify and iTunes and watch video on the Red Barn Radio YouTube channel. And remember this, every like, comment, share, and subscribe helps bring Roots Music Southern style to your neck of the woods. And finally this, if any of our featured artists are performing in your area, get out and hear them live. They need you now more than ever. From all of us here now at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio. 